Um, so the subject of our presentation is remote, re remote work and future impacts on urbanism. Uh, if you can go to the next slide. You could also use the full screen on the, on the lower right, Alex, if you could do that. Yeah, that would, there you go. Um, so the new technologies are typically developed to provide financial gains to developed countries by solving problems. For example, internet came in uh, to, to, to solve a problem of data exchange between a couple of scientists, but then it expanded beyond uh, what it was intended for. And the solution they came up was internet. If you can go uh, next slide. So what started as a, a solution um, started to expand and, um, and go beyond uh, the, um, the, the solution that was originally thought of. Uh, and the initial um, intentions goes beyond that and it end up providing even more benefits. Um, and most of the time, uh, these benefits can also get expanded to underdeveloped countries or developing countries. So the in internet started to provide remote control, uh, remote work, um, data exchange, uh, jobs, um, that wasn't really available in developed countries um, as much as it is now, and as well as the Internet of Things, like selling products online. We can look at the next slide. So um, this, what, what this does, uh, coming into the, um, and, and the connection to our urban design, is connecting developing countries' workforce to Western world. So something, something that wasn't available and possible before. So the Internet of Things, uh, provide a remote workforce opportunity and that expanded into remote work cities um, and India as well as uh, East Asia countries have done a fantastic job in creating a lot of jobs without spending a lot of money in terms of uh, creating infrastructure uh, structure, transportation by just being one of the uh, more advanced countries in terms of expanding internet which is basically what you need. We can look at the next slide. So um, I, I think, um, I don't know if you could call it a remote work urbanism, um, but basically the whole remote work, especially with what is happening, um, is going to change significantly in my opinion. Countries such as India, Bangladesh, Malaysia uh, are using the internet to change the face of the global workforce and create cities that are focused on remote work. Um, and uh, this alone uh, has been a great drive of how they're designing their cities or how the population is growing uh, in their cities. Even though that it is basically a virtual um, effect or vir virtual um, ab ability, uh, it, it is having a huge impact on the physical world. Uh, we can look at the next slide. So w with uh, one more click, I will, thank you. So um, we think um, now obviously everybody's looking to see how, how the COVID is, is affecting uh, their business and their uh, services. Um, and, um, and the same would be with us and in general with the remote workforce. So COVID is pushing us in time, um, I believe, towards a more remote and virtual future. Uh, some things that we would expect it to happen in the next 10 years now we are seeing it happening now. So things that was a um, very hard alternative to consider are now becoming a norm. And I believe by this repeating in the next uh, couple months, and it has been repeating in the next seven, eight months, it is creating a norm that may people uh, decide to go to classes, their kids virtually. They don't want to really drive them that much. They don't want to um, maybe let them go to even to some um, uh, places and educations and entertainment remotely. And we think um, this would also expand into the workforce and into um, how we will be designing workplaces for it. Uh, we think the recent COVID-19 and the solution that are coming to solve the current problem uh, using AR and VR and everything virtual will pave the road to even more benefits to developing countries. Um, as painful and devastating this virus can be, um, I think um, it could be a great opportunity for developed countries and developing countries both uh, to double down on the future where more of their citizens can work remotely and provide more revenue and a better life to their families as well as themselves. The improvement in people's income through working remotely for developing countries or basically attending all these different opportunities in a more accessible virtual way 
will significantly change and improve living standard with very minimal effort on the government sides or, or creating buildings. Um, this, to some extent, um, in a larger scale, will have a reverse impact on developed countries. If you can look at the next slide. So I think I think this is really the most important slide in the presentation. So 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 what this is um, this is about opportunities that remote uh, work will create and how it impacts almost everything. For developed countries, this can simply create more job loss than what we have. Um, and we think what developed countries can do to use this opportunity is to invest the effects of this change on their workforce and their potential job losses. Take action right now. Get in front of developing countries for what we can do for them. So while the, the, the thought is that they, they are doing work for us, there are so many things that are more around expertise and knowledge that, that the, the Western um, and more developed countries can do for them. And it is time for the cities to be equipped for that, to, to empower their citizens for that. And this can be done by invest in virtual cities, provide logistics to citizens and university graduates, um, and do that through entrepreneur uh, centers, uh, something that also can um, mention that in, in his presentation. For developing countries, this means a potential job gains. So in the, in they, they, can, they need to investigate the effects of this change on their workforce and potential job gains. Do whatever it takes to put their citizen and professionals in, pr in front of a uh, Western uh, citizen. Can we look at the next slide? And um, this huge opportunity with developing countries can go from anywhere from public transportations, uh, accessible internets, and, um, and, and shared workplaces. So the centers that citizens can go if they can't afford internet, if they're graduates, they would be able to use that. So these centers can be a potential um, game changer for developing country. This can result in people improvement in their life that impacts directly to the habitat and how they're gonna live and staying in their countries. Let's go to the next. So uh, what we are doing at Glow 3D, uh, we're working with, uh, with uh, three different museums. The, the most uh, known one is the Egypt's. We're working with the Egypt's Ministry of Culture, and we are working on developing world's first virtual museum. What this does, it overcomes accessibility of low-income countries, people that will not be able to afford even travel to Egypt and see what they can see in the museums. Now they could do it at a very small amount. It creates a stability of visiting during social and military unrest. It creates social outreach to younger generations that might be more open uh, to technology. And it also creates geographical outreach to all countries. Let's go to the next one. And this can be repeated in all scale museums. In fact, um, we are working with 16 Canadian museums. Um, then the idea is to create this sort of a virtual museum or virtual exhibit. Uh, so they, uh, different people can, can go really and visit them. Um, if they wanted to get a ticket, they wouldn't really want to spend that mu much money to see a small collections. But if they're all gathered into one location, that increases the chance of doing it. We're also working on virtual exhibitions. Our company is currently working with multiple organizations to develop virtual exhibits. Uh, so attendees can showcase their products in virtual booth and create virtual presentations. This can overcome um, accessibility to low income for low income uh, businesses, um, especially in countries that the whole logistic is an issue. They don't even have a building or they don't have enough small businesses that would be able to uh, create a complete exhibit or a trade show. Or they, don't, they can do all of that, but they can't bring people to that country, whether because of the cost, because of the stabilities in social uh, or, or, or other stabilities they won't be able to bring. So we think these are what the future can bring. Currently, uh, we're working with the uh, Boxing Association of US to create their uh, virtual exhibit, something that they do six times a year because of the COVID. They're planning to do it virtually using our technology. But we believe this will definitely expand beyond that. And uh, even after the uh, pandemic is done, uh, these virtual exhibitions and virtual museums are th something that become normal the same way that online stores was not, but now it is becoming a very uh, big norm. And we think it impacts how, how um, urban designers are designing the cities, how cities are thinking about creating centers for graduates, students, younger or older generations. And we think this must be seen sort of a virtual, how the virtual city uh, will impact the physical city and how things has to change to accommodate uh, these new 
uh, virtual or remote work um, uh, platform. Can we see the next? And that uh, completes, if we click it one more time, that, that uh, completes my presentation.